What's going on, you guys? So, it looks like Paradox, they were supposed to release a dev diary. Instead, they released the 1.2 update for Imperator, which is codenamed Cicero, 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 whatever. <laughs> whatever you pronounce that name, that's what they uh, released. So, this comes following the Pompeii update, which came out in July, I believe, which addressed a lot of fan concerns about the game and... Also patched up a couple of things. This update is supposed to take it further. So let's take a look at it. I'm very interested to see what this gameplay trailer is going to or this update trailer is going to look like. So let's take a look at it. Hello, my name is Peter Nicholson and I'm here to give you an overview of the many changes and additions that the 1.2 Cicero update for Imperato Rome is bringing to the table. Before we begin, I'd like to stress how important the community has been to us in creating this update. The Cicero update has undergone a period of open beta testing, and the feedback we've received on matters great and small has been invaluable in finding the right balance for our changes going forwards. Without further ado, a much anticipated part of this update is the removal of monarch power. In addition to this, a new resource known as political influence is being introduced to the game. Political influence represents the currency of favours and backroom dealings, the ability of a government to weight their decisions with actual power. Political influence is generated by the holders of your core eight offices, scaled by their loyalty. A loyal cabinet will remain a highly advantageous resource for exerting your every whim. The skills of a monarch will not be entirely without purpose, however, with each skill providing a useful national bonus proportional to the ruler's skill in a category. It became apparent over time that we needed something unique to represent the military accolades of a nation in unlocking military traditions, and a highly self-contained military experience resource has been added for this purpose. Military experience is generated over time at a modest base rate, but is modified by the average combat experience of your national cohorts, ensuring that only nations with the best trained forces are able to reach their true potential. The employment of mercenary forces will detract from a nation's military experience gain, but have been made vastly cheaper to maintain to compensate for this. To augment this specialized system, armies will now be able to engage in a military drill, passively increasing their combat experience to a cap, at greatly increased maintenance and increased risk of becoming loyal to their commander. In an effort to further accentuate the uniqueness of each government type, We've overhauled laws for all government forms. Each system is noticeably different from other government forms and comes with its own challenges and pitfalls, as well as the ability to tailor playstyle accordingly. Tribal laws have been reworked into two distinct paths. The left-hand route will take the player down the path of decentralization, embracing a nomadic lifestyle with focuses on raiding, clan chiefs and tribesmen. The right-hand route emphasizes the path to centralization and civilization, with the ultimate aim of reforming the government into a more settled form. Laws will not all be available for change instantly, instead requiring certain centralization thresholds to be met. Laws for monarchies can yield some powerful bonuses and will unlock over the course of the game as they are unlocked by technology. Each law you enact in the main categories will favor either the governors or generals within your realm, accentuating the need to balance well. The choice is still in your hands, however. Exceptional military bonuses can be gained at the cost of angering your governors and risking rebellion. For republics, law categories will be made available over time in a similar fashion to monarchies. Instead of balancing positive and negative modifiers, as in the old system, only positive country modifiers will be applied. The catch, however, is that each law is associated with a faction that feels strongly on or against the issue at hand. Many of the most lucrative or tyrannical laws are opposed by the populist faction. Be careful to consider the strength of your democracy before enacting. Additionally, two new government interactions have been made available for republics. By popular demand, a republican version of the War Council interaction can now be acquired as well as an interaction to submit your favoured gubernatorial candidates for evaluation by the Curate Assembly. These interactions are mutually exclusive and unlocked by your choice in the new Laws of Assembly category. Perhaps the largest and most sweeping change to the fabric of Imperator is our overhaul of the POP management system. The promotion, assimilation, conversion and movement of POPs will no longer depend on direct player management. 
Instead, POPs will be subject to an impetus to convert, assimilate or promote over time based on local situation and national policies. Migration will also occur over time, and will occur when a POP is able to move to a nearby territory that has a higher migration attraction than the territory in which it currently resides. Governor policies, buildings, and various national laws and decisions will interact with and steer these systems, allowing for limited control over a living and breathing population simulation which responds to the environment around it. In a similar effort to breathe more life into the world of Imperator, cities will no longer be the default state for all administrative units on the map. Instead, territories, as we've elected to call them, may qualify as a settlement, a city or a metropolis. Cities have been placed in many major historic city sites at the start of the game, with all other territories becoming settlements. Settlements will no longer display modelled buildings, bringing a new beauty to the map of Imperator. The distinction between territory types will not merely be cosmetic, however. Settlements, whilst unable to support vast populations, will benefit from the ability to sustain up to one of six unique buildings, letting you specialise them into farms, mines or more to support the population centres of your realm. Cities, on the other hand, will have access to 14 building types and will receive bonuses to population capacity and much more. Buildings will not be capped in cities allowing for much more granular control over pop-type ratios, output, and happiness. If a city reaches a certain threshold, it may be upgraded to metropolis status, yielding further bonuses to the resident population. Cities can, of course, be founded or raised, giving you ultimate control over the fabric of your nation. To further enhance the addition of city types and population simulations, a food supply mechanic is being introduced. Each pop will consume food from the province supply, adding an extra level of internal management to growing nations. The import of food will play an even more important role in the Cicero update, as a reliance on external partners for trade will put you at risk if you find yourself in conflict with your grain supplier. As the food supply of the province increases, the growth level of pops within it will increase accordingly. To account for this, many growth modifiers have been converted to food income modifiers. Food will have repercussions on warfare too, as a province with a large food stockpile will be tougher to siege. Sieges will slowly begin to drain the food supply of a province, falling famine to invaders if the supply reaches zero. Friendly units will forego attrition damage if a positive food supply is present, consuming from the food supply instead. If a hostile force occupies a province capital, they will be able to consume from the food supply instead, giving good reason to prevent invaders from occupying your lands. Alongside all these keystone features, a huge amount of additional work has been done on expanding the world we are building in Imperator. A large number of flavour events, heritages and country unique inventions have been included. A lot of work has gone into AI in the Cicero update with a focus on improving the performance of key players in the ancient world and providing an end-game threat to players in all theatres. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for supporting Imperator as we continue in our journey. And I hope you all enjoy the many aspects of the Cicero update in true Roman fashion. That was something right there. Wow. So, <laughs> you know, I said this with Pompeii, the 1.1 update. I'm going to say this with Cicero's update. This is not just a point one update. This feels like a massive DLC. This is changing so many core mechanics, adding so much content to this game that it's, yeah, literally, I was going through this change log here about all the different changes that they're making to the game with this 1.2 update. You can see how much shit they're putting into the game it's incredible wow i mean what that, that literally took me like that's like forever go down this list here so you could imagine how much stuff we're getting just for free in this game so a couple things that i took away just that i can literally just took away from that trailer here so the first thing is the whole production system right in the provinces and cities right i love the fact that you could actually take a province and make it a city right and then also the fact that 
each province can build one thing, but if you have a city, you can build multiple buildings, right? And another thing on top of that is that you can build a variety of buildings, right? I noticed in the current game, right, you could build, like, I think four. As far as I know, you can only build four. And then here you could build oh, quite a bit more. So I thought that was really cool. I saw something with Code of Law or something like that, which looks very intriguing to see how you can manage a population and stuff like that. So that was critical. I do like the fact, other things that they added, which was, you know, you have the advisor thing, which always comes in handy. But I would say the military thing, where you can have your armies drill, that's going to become in, uh, really beneficial, at least for me. And then they have that big factor of, is this political influence? So it represents your network of contacts, leverage, and connections. Influence is generated by your government official representative value to your government. A disloyal minister will provide less influence. Be careful to treat them well. Influence is used for a variety of actions that require flexing and political weight. This is going to be really very useful in the game. And I think it's going to alter how you're going to actually play the game. Mainly from what I'm getting here, it looks like, you know, if I want to do an action and I don't have good political support, obviously, that's going to... <laughs> it's going to rain on my parade, right? So I think this is going to provide some critical changes to the game, which is going to be good. I think it's going to add all to a whole new dimension to the way you play the game. And I, I'm looking forward to this. The other big thing I would have to say is the food. I really like the fact that they're including this because before, like, the way the food was managed was, well, you didn't have to worry about it, you know? So... Yeah, it was just kind of like, it was more like hands-off, and I was kind of saying, well, this is kind of like an important resource, you know, starvation and all that stuff. So them adding this in is going to add a nice little tidbit, especially for sieges like they were talking about. I think this is going to be really useful because... Instead of you just populating the map and, you know, your, your color red or blue or whatever country you're, you're in, you have to kind of consider other internal factors. Besides, you know, this political influence, you also have to consider, like, do all my cities have food, right? A critical influence, you know, a critical piece of the pie. And, you know, then you have the ability now to also focus on, you know, provinces as well cities and old and buildings inside and more buildings as, and characters as well and you know they made some influences or changes to the ai so that's going to be also good so tons and tons of stuff and i really appreciate that paradox is doing this adding more and more content and this is for free i really honestly me personally i love this game you know and this is just you know the cherry on top so yeah, I really hope that people do enjoy this update and, you know, leave positive reviews so, you know, Paradox can continue developing this game over the next couple of years. Because I would love to see this game kind of be fleshed out like Crusader Kings and the rest of the Paradox lineup. So, be sure to download this, guys. I believe it just came out. So, be sure to download it. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you then.